Welcome back to our third video on our population modeling ser series. Uh, and in this uh, video, we're going to introduce what's ultimately going to be known as a logistic growth model. And this is a really important model uh, through all of population ecology um, and, and you know, population modeling more generally. And uh, yeah, we're going to kind of go through where it comes from. And, and this will ultimately be serve, serve as the basis of many more complicated models that we'll get to later. Okay, so in our last series of videos, we derived the exponential growth model, which is the one that said per capita growth rate DNDT over N uh, was just a constant. And that model can really only produce two outcomes, either you're declining to extinction or you're growing unbounded. And that's because the population growth rate is always constant as a function of the size of the population. So DNDT versus n as a, as a function of n is always constant. Um, so I'd ask, if, if is this realistic? Well, not, real, not really. I and mean, we see a lot of populations that are doing, that are kind of just staying strong. They're staying steady. They're not declining exponentially. They're not growing exponentially. Um, so that assumption of per capita growth is really not, a, uh, it may be a useful approximation in the short term, for many management operations, uh, such as knowing whether a species is in decline or not, knowing whether an invasive species is increasing or not. But <clears throat> very often we need to know more than just that. Um, so if we wanted to improve on this model, what would be the simplest alternative to a constant per capita growth rate? In other words, what function would we wanna use uh, for DNDT equals N? So I would argue if our exponential model uh, corresponded to a flat line constant at, a, at the value R for pop, per capita growth rate, that our simplest alternative model is to have per capita growth rate just be a straight line, uh, be a, a straight line, but one that's not flat. And particularly uh, if we're looking at per capita growth rate is a function of n. So n is here on our x-axis, per capita growth rate is on our y-axis. What we typically would expect is that the per capita growth rate declines as the size of the population gets larger. And this would occur anytime that there's any sort of uh, resource limitation to a pot on a population. So if there's if you're starting out at very low population sizes and there's abundant resources, your per capita growth rate is going to be very high. Uh, but as your resources, as your, per, as your population increases in size, those resources are being divided up among more and more individuals. And so the resources per individual are going to go down. Uh, at some point, you're gonna uh, hit a po po point where that per capita growth rate uh, goes to zero. And we're going to find that point as k. Uh, so our growth, our our y-intercept is r, our per capita growth rate, and that per capita growth rate still applies when the population is is small and not limited by resources. And the point where the uh, this line goes to zero, our x-intercept, we're going to define as k. And in reality, this functional response could be far more complicated than a straight line. We're only making the assumption that it's a straight line because it literally is the simplest alternative to assuming that R is constant. So in, for any real population, the shape of this curve could be interesting, but one of the things we're gonna find is the ultimate set of dynamics that are, is possible is actually not hugely sensitive uh, to the shape of this line as much as these two intercepts. Uh, where they occur and when they occur. That said, if I want to make numerical predictions for a population, it actually is pretty important to know the shape of that curve if I want to have accurate predictions. Okay, so if we uh, are modeling per capita growth rate as a function, as a straight line, let's start with the traditional formula for a straight line, y equals mx plus b. And here we said the, the y-intercept b is uh, 
our per capita growth rate, little r. Um, and we had, uh, if k was our x-intercept, then we have a slope, delta y, delta x, that is going to be uh, minus r over k. So if, as we go from 0 to k on the x-axis, we go from r to 0 on the y-axis. So uh, a, a delta x of k corresponds to a delta y of minus r. So our slope is uh, minus r over k. And so that if we plug that in, we have dn dt over n is uh, minus r over k n plus r. And traditionally, we represent this in a not in terms of population growth rate, not in terms of per capita growth rate. Uh, so we traditionally simplify this to dn dt equals r times n, uh, 1 minus n times k. And so I've multiplied both sides by n, uh, but then I've pulled the r and the n out and, and kept uh, the remainder in the parentheses. So for a 1 for the r times n part and a, a minus k over uh, minus n over k from this other part. And so this popular this gives us what's known as the logistic growth model. <clears throat> it is possible to get an analytical solution for the logistic growth model, uh, but it's it's less trivial to solve for, so we're gonna not not worry about that right now. Instead, what we're going to do is thinking about how to model this in discrete time. Uh, so what we often do in discrete time is say, uh, our delta n, n of t plus 1 minus n, uh, is just the difference in population. And our delta t is often you know, set to 1. Uh, you can just change units of time in some way so that that is always 1. Um, and then I'll just move the, the n of t, you know, uh, basically add n of t to both sides. So if I started with n of t plus 1 minus n of t as my delta at n, uh, I can move the, basically move this t over here to get the model, this discrete time uh, model n of t plus 1 equals n of t. So my, fut my future population is my current population plus some growth rate. And the logistic model is giving me my growth rate. So uh, if I'm not limited, so if n is near k, that's just uh, this term here, 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 0 is just 1. And so it's basically r times n, you know, our, our growth rate. Uh, cool. And so this is a model that's easy to simulate. Uh, so we set up a loop, n of t plus 1 equals n of t plus r times n plus 1 minus n over k. And if I simulate this forward, it starts at its whatever its initial condition is, that n0. And it initially starts growing exponentially, uh, but then that, that growth rate is declining as the population goes up. And it's eventually going to asymptote uh, to some value. And that, that value it's going to asymptote to is going to be k, which is often known as the carrying capacity of a system. Because it corresponds to that kind of steady state solution. The capacity, the, you know, the resource capacity of, of the system to support that many individuals. If there was more individuals, then you would, if you have more individuals than that, your uh, birth rate's going to be lower, your death rate's going to be higher than your birth rate and your population will decline. If you're below that, your birth rate's going to be higher than your death rate and your population will increase. Okay, so that's going to wrap up kind of the basic introduction to the logistic model. And in the next couple of lectures, we're going to dive deeper into the logistic model and thinking about uh, the sensitivity of this model uh, first to the growth rate, little r, and then after that to the uh, uh, initial condition. Uh, um, and then we're not going to look at the sensitivity to 
k, the carrying capacity, because you can always change the units of n to make k equal zero. So not, you know, we'll see some responses in terms of shape to these other things, but it's actually from a, a theoretician's perspective, k is utterly uninteresting because it basically just controls the units of the y-axis. Um, so we'll pick up there in the next video. Thanks.